going on out there ladies and gentlemen we are one month one week one day one hour one minute one second closer to the start of the 2022 football season and your utsa roadrunners are in fact the reigning conference champion my yeah name is jared kalmas i'm your host joined by my co-host adrian from bermudez how are you doing adrian hell yeah Champ? i'm doing i'm doing i'm pumped now holy cow yes sir Yes, indeed. We were out there today with the bling championship ring, showing them out on the stage, baby. Love that. CUSA Media Day was looking hot. It, oh, my goodness. The drip was, was on a thousand, sir. Oh, man. it was just amazing. Astonishing. Yes. So I'm pumped up. I'm, I'm more excited. It's it's good to see the the boys and Frank in front of the uh, I'm sorry the 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 Frank and 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 Jeff and John up in, in front of the camera talking and it just it feels like yeah football season's like closer it, it really feels like okay now because you know it, it's really just a month away and I don't I don't know if that's really clicked for a lot of people it hasn't no, really clicked for so. me but it felt like it's getting closer to click after watching them on ESPN plus I was like all right yeah yep. hey this thing's coming okay yep yeah I'll I'll say this much. And I was going to save this for a later talking point, but it's clear the rest of these Conference USA teams need to step their NIL up because they got mm. blown out of the water when it came to the drip at Media Day. Sir, that San Antonio money was showing <laughs> out, huh? Boy, oh boy, it was it was completely next level all around. I mean, dude. And it was funny because earlier, that I can't remember which team they were talking to, but they were they were talking to oh my gosh I, and I don't want to say it was the wrong squad but it's probably two or three teams before UTSA got up on there you know their little segments but they were calling in the guys like cool gray 11s is Air Jordan 11s right they like talked about that on the broadcast and then I think I see JJ's video of Frank walking up off the stairs I was like oh my goodness gracious yeah incredible what a fun day media day is really really a lot of fun what do you think what do you think of Conference USA Media Day? I think they've really sort of upped their game a little bit, huh? This was the, the first media day they didn't feel, sorry to say it, but Bush League. They, they, in the past, they've kind of felt a little bit like that. This year felt like the real deal. Like oh, show, it's showcase. Yeah, I thought it was a great event, and they still got dragged by Sunbelt fans on Twitter in, a, in a, what I thought was a very misleading, I think intentionally misleading tweet. But um, it was set mm -hmm. at Globe Life Field, which is the Texas Rangers' new ballpark up in Arlington. Yes. And I was pretty apprehensive about that. I was like, it's just kind of weird. Um, I know Conference USA has a storied tradition of having sporting events in the wrong kind of stadium, obviously with the uh, the basketball tournament having been at the Star in Frisco so many years, playing in a football stadium, mm -hmm. and now they're having mm -hmm. a football event instead of a baseball stadium. Sure. Uh, but I thought it looked really good. I thought it really portrayed – a position of strength and like influence and preparation that you haven't really seen from conference USA. Um, I, I mean, I guess since UTSA has been in it, you know, it's, it's been rare to see I mean, the conference do something that was like kind of impressive and it's um, preparation and, and just quality. For quality, for production quality. I think it's the best I've ever seen from a Agreed. CSA production. I mean, yeah. it was a great showcase. Everything was set up extremely nice. The quality of the coverage was really, really good as far as the guys you had on the panel talking about each team. Every single breakdown was done really well. They were asking good questions. They seemed to have a familiarity with every single team that they were talking about, which you don't usually see mm -hmm. whenever, well, most Talking heads are talking about CSA. So that was cool. Yeah. And I forgot the host name, um, at least for the part that was on ESPN plus, you know, when they had like the, the two players and head coach, the guy who was running those interviews, I thought did a fantastic job. Right. Yeah. And he did I, I did hear him mention during the UTEP interview that he actually was the play by play for their whole game against Fresno state. So I don't know uh, if he calls a lot of conference USA games or not, but I thought he did a fabulous job and like he really knew the conference really well, but he also did a good job of like, getting a little personal with the coaches and players and kind of humanizing right. them a bit. Yeah. So I thought they crushed it there. Right. Yeah. And he kind of knew a little bit of backstory behind certain people, not just sort of on the field stuff. Right. He kind of had familiarity with players and with coaches 
and he was able to kind of get those little uh little insiders and inside jokes and, and lines and, and ask those good questions it was it was good it was it was really really good quality production was awesome uh the you know the set the set was set up really really nice you know you had the the cool lounge chairs hell they even rolled a rug out it looked super good uh guys were looking classy up there and you know you had good reels good splices coming in uh, everything was done well so i was impressed definitely overall yeah it is interesting though because the americans just doing theirs over zoom this year and i think that they're the only so conference weird. yeah the only conference doing it over zoom it was really yeah. weird it's so strange. i don't know if that was like the departing schools making a big deal of it that they didn't want to fly out to dallas um well actually i heard a story on split zone duos patreon episode recently if you don't subscribe to that podcast and especially their patreon what are you doing if you enjoy us you're gonna love them if you want a more national view of like kind of the way that we talk about college football uh you'll love split zone duo anyways they were telling a story of um whenever tom herman was at uh the AAC used yeah. to have their media days uh, in Maryland or Connecticut or somewhere on the East Coast, and they did like a crab boil, and uh, no, it was awesome. But no one ever went, so I wonder if that was like part of the reason why they are doing Zoom this year. But I don't think it's a good look <laughs> for Conference USA and Sun Belt to have this big extravagant booth that they have set up and doing these HD broadcasts on ESPN Plus, and then. The Americans just going to be over Zoom like that. Be over know, Zoom, really yeah. People are doing it from, yeah, yeah. That's that's it's not. And speaking of departing schools that you mentioned, do you think the departing schools, the the split, the breakup of Conference USA, the current form of it, has anything to do with the production quality being ramped up? No, I don't think so. I think that this has probably been in the works for a while, if I had to guess. But I think that Conference USA has finally learned their lesson. I think that based on yeah. some of the comments that we've seen from some of the remaining Conference USA schools, I don't, is there like a nickname for those teams? Like the Louisiana Tech, Western Kentucky, Middle Tennessee group? I've heard some sure people call the Big, the Big 12 leftovers like the Hateful Eight. And stuff I'm like not that. sure. I don't know. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe we need a, uh, a, a name for that. But we can I have seen form, some yeah. comments from their ADs where they're like, look, we have to get on ESPN+. Plus. Like Sunbelt is killing us, but you can watch Sunbelt – you know, spring games and press right. conferences and, and the games themselves, obviously all on ESPN plus your fans only have to get one subscription and they can follow the program really well. So I think conference USA has learned their lesson there. Um, and I also think like the new schools coming in are like, yeah, like we'll make the jump. Like I can see like San Diego state be like, yeah, we'll make the jump, but we need you to promise us that like everything's going to be on ESPN plus for our fans. So mm -hmm. uh, just a theory I have, I don't have, I haven't seen any reporting saying that was the case, but I just think like, it just, it took them 10 years to learn, but you can't fight the mouse. You know, ESPN and Disney has taken over college football everywhere you look. Well, so there's I think been, uh, just realized it. Well, look, I mean, the CUSA fan base have been giving them that feedback for years yeah. about yeah. the quality, how bad it was, how, how Bush league, how, how low grade a lot of their production was. Hell, I think at one point I got an email from a from a CUSA correspondent because I wrote an article about CUSA TV being bad. Yeah, but all they were doing was sending me an email. They were doing anything to improve it, right? And, and, and <laughs> that's what right. But yeah. but that existed all over Twitter, all over social media, and Facebook, yeah, there, and, there, and the blogosphere for years. For years, right. there, there there's a ton of. I know we're going way off the rails, but I will say there's a ton of misinformation out there about how this stuff works, about production, distribution, all that. And I do what I can to kind of hop in and like kind of explain how it works behind the curtains, at least as much as I can. It's like a lay person that's never worked in sports broadcasting before. Um, but you mentioned Conference USA TV, and I think that's important to call out because these media days could have been on Conference USA TV, but mm -hmm. they weren't. They were on ESPN Plus. So I think right. that's a good sign it's for huge. the conference, not, not just like for us in this last year that we have in Conference USA, uh, but also for the, the leftover schools and the incoming schools as well. It's like, I don't like San Diego State, but I think their fans deserve access and, you know, a good product and all that. So I'm happy for them in that sense. If we can leave CUSA behind in, in better hands yeah. than it was, right? And in a better it's, place than it was whenever we got to it. That's like what getting matters. out of a bad relationship. Like you both move forward. You wish the best for each other. And you hope it, that you, you both learned a little bit. Everybody along the way grew better. and you're going to be a better partner to your next partner, right? I think and they call so it uh, camp, campsite rules. Like leave it better than you found it. 
Exactly that. Oh my gosh, Jared. Well said. And and that's exactly what's happened here. You know, fans have been banging the table for a long time and half of them are leaving, but for the next generation of CUSA fandom, they're, they're going to appreciate the quality. I think so. It's going to be an upgrade for them. It's going to be an upgrade for them. Yeah. Yeah. So let's, let's talk a little bit about kind of the UTSA response at media day. Um, first off, like it was just weird. It was like an out of body experience for me to like hear all these other schools talk about UTSA, like we're Alabama. Like that <laughs> is uncomfortable. It's like it's one thing to have like there have been media days in the past where UTSA had a good season, and then it was like, well, we got UTSA at the end of the year. That's gonna be tough. They're gonna be a tough team to beat. They're well coached. Yep, I heard you know, that. Those those boys are coached up. I heard you know, those comments. That, it's so funny. It's what the coaches always say when they know that team sucks, but they're too nice to say it. They're always like, well, they're well coached. You know, Coach right. Coach Smith over there, he's been around forever. He knows his stuff, right? <laughs> um, so it's, it's nice to not hear that. It's nice to hear like, oh, you know, they're the best team in our league or they gave us L last year or whatever. Yeah. So that was kind of cool. That's right. That's right. There was definitely an echo of that kind of throughout the entire media day, right? And then sure enough, because they did a good job of kind of putting UTSA a little bit later in the scheduling. And so you heard all these teams talking about it. People were talking about it. And finally, when UTSA sort of takes the stage, they really do as showstoppers. I mean, they shut the freaking place down, uh, come in totally dripped out with the championship rings, swagger from head to toe um, and sit there and, and, they're super, super easy to love players because they speak extremely well. They're super humbled. And and watching like Frank and Shot up there talking and answering questions and interacting with the media, it's 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 levels ahead of a lot of the other players that were interacting with the media and taking questions from the other teams. That's nothing that's nothing to say anything about that, but they're just so charismatic and you know that's just a natural thing that they've got and so you know you, they, they really did a good job of stealing the show and just kind of having you just sort of be enamored with them and their style and, and a lot of fun clearly had a lot of fun out there doing it as well and then of course jeff trailer uh right giving us giving us the one-liners and you can clearly see that those three which you know those two guys being the leaders of the offense and the defense respectively you can see that they're fully aware of what everyone's saying. The elephant in the room is UTSA, right? Everyone knows it. Everyone's got the asterisk, the circle, the highlighter on their name on the schedule. And uh, I think they, I think they know the pressures there and they can feel it. And, and, and they've done a pretty good job of handling it as far as just, you know, in the media and, and showing face wise, they've done a good job of handling it so far. Yeah. I, th- I thought it was telling, you know, coach trailer made a comment you know, 20 years from now, whatever it is, like, we're going to look back at the leadership that Frank Harris and Rashad Wisdom, Sincere McCormick, like, showed to this program to, like, rise it up to not as full potential, but the potential that we're at right now. And, like, Frank and Rashad, like, barely responded to that. Like, right. if that was me, I'd have started crying, dude. What a huge compliment. It's 100% true. And those guys are just like, yep, like, business Add as it. usual. At like, attention. We, we came here to do this. We're doing it. We're going to keep doing it. Right. That impressed me a lot. That was a very much bull don't care mentality. And I like, I like to see that. that was you good. love to see that. You love to see that nothing affecting them sort of thing, just made out of armor. Right. And they get those questions. Like, how does it feel being the hometown kid? You grew up here and now you won a championship. And they're just like, that's always been the plan. Like, what are you yeah. talking about? We just did it. Now it, it's now it's time to do. Now we're on the quest for number two. Like, yeah, I, I think it was Rashad <laughs> or maybe it was Frank. I don't know. But they said whenever they first got to UTSA, a lot of the talk around town was why UTSA? Like, why'd you go there? But now fast forward, you know, a couple of years, four years later or whatever. And mm. all these same people are like, oh, UTSA, that's my dream school. Like, I wish they would offer me. Like, I want to go there so bad and stuff like that. So that <laughs> that part's really fascinating to me. Just that change in reception. You know what I mean? I, so how does that feel? Is it is it strange? Is it odd? Is it weird to be the champ, to be hunted? Do you feel that way? You think the players feel that way? You think like the I said, it was like that a, way? It was like an out-of-body experience for me. Maybe the players are more used to it than I am. Because, uh, you know... I went to the games against Bacone and McMurray, you know what I'm saying? Sure. Like, like yes, I always had big things in mind for you to say, but to see it happen like this is, is still, still takes some adjusting for sure. Definitely. It certainly does. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I just think that 
it's been so clear it's been so cut and clear that utsa is the freaking team to beat and they proved that every single week on the field and yeah you know trailer opens up with those games are you know all super close and one possession two possession games could have gone either way could have gone the other way and you know he makes some comments like that but i mean honestly man it was it was such and the evidence was crystal clear it was, it was utsa was the team to beat and so it's not that strange to me just because, you know, I, I think the proof was in the pudding and there's sure. so many people coming back. It's the same issues for all the same competition. And, you know, I, we, we are, we, we are the team to beat and it is what it is. I just think it, it's very important for every single person to kind of sit back and enjoy the ride, enjoy being the hunted right now. Right. Cause it's never happened before for UTSA. I thought Take, it was interesting that, Coach Trailer went out of his way to say that if he had a vote, he would have voted for UAB for the favorite. What, what did you think of that? Do you think that was him just being modest or do you think he really feels that way? That was a thousand percent coach speak, locker room speak. <laughs> him just saying what he's supposed to freaking ass say. <laughs> Everyone knows bull don't care, but that's a bunch of bullshit. <laughs> coach you already know <laughs> utsa is the team to beat you beat uav in the alamo dome talking all this we gotta go to the, we gotta go there this year we gotta yeah. go to birmingham this year we got i'm like so how <laughs> difference does that make man we are still the team to beat uav has got us circled and i understand he's got to have the players thinking we gotta still go and beat uab and a thousand percent he's correct about that but at the end of the day you got to beat the champs to be the champs, baby. And UTSA is the champs right now. We're not going down very easily for anybody. I think we're the team that needs to, that, that, that deserves and commands that respect. But I appreciate, I appreciate coach uh, giving the PR answer there. That's what he's supposed to do. And then I'd rather him do that than be like, that's right. Yeah. Really defending. And I wouldn't expect that from trailer either, but. Right. Right. Yeah. Great. I mean, I, I can't argue with either of you. Uh, with what he said and what you said, I think probably both accurate in, in their own sense. But it was very interesting that he didn't say the same thing about West Kentucky. Oh, baby, I love that. Yeah, I absolutely love that. Well, but I mean, it's, I kind of have a hot take. I don't, I don't think West Kentucky is going to be that good. Like, I think they're going to win enough games in, in Conference USA, and their schedule is pretty light. I don't know, but, I, but I mean, isn't that kind of obvious that there's going to be a big fall from grace from you would think so. Western Kentucky? But, I mean, I think that's pretty obvious for a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. You would think so, but a lot of people still have them pretty high up there with, with like most people see it as like a trio of teams that are going to compete this year. Dude, I, I think it's a clear one or two. You know, it's funny when I first opened up the uh, ESPN plus app, Western Kentucky was the helmet at the front. Like, it, cause you know, I, so they had all the helmets, for each UCSA team behind the panel. And then whichever team that they were on for that 15 minute segment, they would have their helmet front and center. So I first put on ESPN plus, I see all the helmets in the back and I see the WKU helmet front and center. I'm like, what the hell's going on here? <laughs> well, I didn't like, I didn't put two and two together yet. And that they were just on their segment. And I was like, oh, okay. I was about to fire off a ridiculous tweet. And I was like, wait a minute, let's relax. All right. That's pure you know? UTSA Twitter <laughs> behavior right there. <laughs> and um, yeah, yeah. So a lot of respect and a lot of respect to UAB and they still deserve that respect more, a lot more so than the WKU does. Cause they're going to have that drop off. They're losing the entire Houston Baptist Bailey Zappi <laughs> offense. Right. And so no, more than that too, though. But yeah. Right. And, and UAB, well, they're bringing a lot back and they're still going to be tough as hell as they always are. I guess the last thing I got to talk about Frank Harris, slippers. What, what are the, were those Louboutin? Or Sachi? What were those? Those were, those were totally Sachi, Sachi made. Yeah. And it was just absolutely ridiculous. I saw him whenever he was coming up the stairs in a little clip on Twitter. And then I saw him <laughs> on the thing and I was ready for him. And I was like, oh man, this place is going to blow up. And holy cow, dude. I mean, they're on the edge with that bright, bright orange with the gold on it, the gold tips, the gold yeah. spikes. I mean, just filthy drip. And he intentionally wore 
the high water khakis, <laughs> yeah. the capris. So you could see the whole loafer. You could see the ankle yeah. above it. No socks. I mean, it was it was really summertime Steve's action. And so I really appreciated that. Hey, you know, it's it's hot out here in Texas right now. And so no socks. I can't blame you, Frank. And the and the chill loafers, dude, just out here starting in the orange. And he really shut it down with that. I think you make a great point when you talk about that San Antonio NIL bread, baby. Uh, Cause I mean, Holy cow, dude, no one, no one was even close to that level of swag right there. Look, if you're going to wear a $2,000 championship ring on your finger, you got to wear a $600 pair of slides to match that match that match, that's sir. Just, that's just the way it is, man. Dude, that was ridiculous. Yep. And the bling on stage. I mean, you love to see it. And they earned every right Mm -hmm. to bask in that moment. And this was cool, too, because this was sort of the final hoorah of the champions, right? This was the last stop of the championship tour is media day because come next week, right? Or a couple weeks, practice starts and the season starts and you're back and you're about your business. But just one last time let's take it in right and i like mm-hmm. that they totally milked that for every single second yeah. that it was and then when you get on in the practice field next week that's gonna be 98 degrees humid you put them damn championship rings away those things shouldn't come out of the box until the season's over well, i think <laughs> they talked i think they talked about i think they talked about that rashad wasn't said you know it's probably the last time i ever wear it. it's just gonna yeah. go into a shelf now probably for the rest of yeah. forever and uh i just dude Think about being a UAB defensive back right now or, or, or defensive lineman right now and, or, or, or a UNT player. I mean, dude, and seeing, seeing that fool walk on the stage in those shoes and the ring on, I mean, oh my gosh, dude, hit him where it hurts, baby. I mean, I love it. I know there are, some haters in CUSA after that media day and bring it on, baby. I mean, we're going to bask in it, dude, with the champs. Yep. Well said. Well, uh, we're going to move into talking about the UTSA fan survey that yes. we did for the first time. That was a fascinating experience. I can't wait so to excited. do the 23 version. But <laughs> so before excited. we do that, of course, we want to shout out all of our Patreon subscribers. Give you guys a little cumbia break as well. Got a couple of new subscribers this week, uh, both joined us at the Booster tier. That includes Artemio Canales and Jawad Benzala. And I will say that these two gentlemen are very smart because we just started putting together our merch packages for the season. So mm-hmm. if you subscribe at the booster level or higher, you're guaranteed a merchandise drop once yes, per year. Sir. Yes, sir. Yes. And we try to order extra to get you know, new subscribers throughout the span of season and all that, but we run out, right? Uh, we're not going to do a whole new merch run for, for two new subscribers. So I always recommend subscribing. If you're not subscribing, subscribe before the season or right at the beginning. And then you have a, a pretty much good guarantee that you're not going to have to wait a couple months to get your merch drop. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. And then of course, if you join us at our big money donor or board of trustees members, you get an extra special gift, which I'm super stoked about. It's going to be very mm-hmm. special. Something that has actually been requested mm-hmm. for many, many years. So Ooh. I'm glad that um, we actually found a, I guess, uh, a third party to work with to provide those. Uh, and that, those will be going out to our big money donors, including Ben Tovar, Rick Cortez of Rowdy Road Grillers, Zach Espereguetta of the San Antonio Podcast Network, as well as the board of trustees members, Digitique, John Elwell, Lino Perez of Los Dos Rowdy Tailgating, and Gary and Ruben representing the UTSA Bird Gang Tailgate. Stoked, man. Amazing. That's always the best part, right? It's always the best part to do that big old merch send-off day where my entire office right here is just lined up with packages. And it's just like a physical reminder of the amazing support that you guys give to us. It's very uh, cool. We, we were recently able to purchase a, a Pro Football Focus subscription for the first mm. time. Mm-hmm. Um, I was maybe stealing that before from someone else's account. Now we mm. got our own, so we're legit. So that money always gets reinvested back into hundred uh, percent our product, right? We have a lot 100%. of big things that we want to uh, to pick up this year. Of course, we need some extra money to make it a little bit more feasible. So if you like us, you support us, and you want to get some good content out of it, now's the time. 
to sign up on Patreon. This is the biggest sales pitch I'll do all year heading into the start of season. <laughs> Doing a great job. Well, thank you. Oh, you <laughs> killed it last time. I can't remember what you said, but like your facial expression, was, I was like, oh man, I want to buy that. That was good. Oh man. Yeah. I mean, we go and clip that and make a little commercial for it. <laughs> yeah. That was good yeah. though. That was fantastic. And look, it, it, it does go back in. It's been fantastic to get the support. I really love it in particular, whenever people start receiving the packages and we get the screenshots on Twitter and yeah. Uh, you know, Jared's handwritten letters and all that good stuff. It's fantastic. So, oh, and, uh, I don't know about the handwritten letters anymore, man. Like, <laughs> I gotta be a bit much. <laughs> My handwriting's so bad. And you've got too many subscribers now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you want to write them, feel free. <laughs> well, I think we'll see just, just the merch just go around. Not just subscribers, but a bunch of non-subscribers, just Twitter users and people on the Twitter space all responded to the UTSA fan survey brought to you by Alamo Dome Audible. And it was super awesome. I mean, we got great feedback. We got yeah. so much of it, way more than we expected. And uh, it was a hell of a lot of fun reading some of the responses and reading some of the feedback. And so we're going to go through those results here. And I think you guys are going to be pretty, <laughs> pretty entertained to hear some. I th yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. All right. You want to do a quick come here, break, And then we'll hop into that. Yes, sir. Please Let's do it. All right, guys, like we said before the Cumbia break, we're here to break down and I guess kind of announce uh, the results of the fan survey that we did. Uh, for context, if you didn't read the article that I posted or, or take the survey, uh, Chris Vanini of The Athletic has been doing a G5 fan survey for a couple of years now. And it's always been one of my favorite pieces of like offseason content, um, not only because it's interesting to get perspective like from fans of other conferences and teams, but also because it changes year over year. Uh, so the big mm -hmm. example this year is the approval rate for the Sunbelt commissioner, Keith Gill, went up by like 40% since the last round of realignment, right? So that's really fascinating. So I try to set up this survey to kind of achieve some of those same results, like, in, you know, year over year. Uh, so there's some questions right now that might seem like a little tame, but we'll probably get spicy in the future. You know what I'm saying? So it would be interesting to track how these numbers weigh out, you know, going into the AAC and stuff. Very cool. Yeah, absolutely. I, and you did a great job putting this all together, but thank you. Uh, very, very interesting results. What we were discussing earlier before the podcast is how different or, or how much difference, how much correlation, maybe we should say, would there be between, you know, the Alamo Dome audible listener base oh, yeah. and the general average UTSA fan. So we we're hoping that these are, are pretty reflective of, of the full demographic but uh, uh, man i hope so too I mean, we, we got a lot of, we got 160 responses which i think is a pretty good number right? definitely i don't definitely. really remember the math of like uh of representative set or whatever but i feel like 160 responses that translates to a pretty good chunk of of the core of the fan base i'd say for sure but, uh, like a really high percentage of people said they subscribed to our patreon yeah it was like 56 percent so I do feel like there's a lot of bias in that sense. <laughs> that, uh, Maybe so. I guess it didn't spread around like enough of the fan base. So uh, it would be great if 56% of UTSA fans subscribe to our Patreon. If we could quit our jobs. That would be <laughs> tight. Uh, but I don't think that's reality. <laughs> but yeah, Maybe in the future. Good. Maybe the AC days. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. Um, so the first section of the survey was kind of like some demographic collection. I just kind of mm. wanted like we were talking about earlier, kind of get a pulse of like, what's the bias going to look like? Like who are the people that are responding to the survey? Um, so I wanted to see like, are these fans with like formal ties to the university? Like are they students, alumni, uh, had a kid that went there, whatever, or are they just like local San Antonio fans? Um, and then also for the alumni age, I think plays an important factor in a lot of these questions, especially when we get into the rivalry discussion. Like, I haven't done the full data analysis of all this stuff. I'm 
probably do that later. But I'm curious, like for people that graduated before 2011, who do they consider the main rival versus kids that are in school now? Right. Like that kind of data is going to be really interesting to dive to. But um, I think overall we found that the res- this response kind of backed up what everyone thought that this is a really, really young fan base, really young compared For to sure. most schools. Yeah. So 77% of the people that responded were alumni, which was a little bit higher than I thought. Uh, 6% of them were students, which was way lower than I thought. I guess we're not, we need to get on TikTok and, and reach more of the students. I don't know. Um, yeah. and then thir- 13% were like non-student or just like San Antonio locals. Um, a lot of people wrote in and said like, you know, my kid went to UTSA or, you know, stuff like that. But, I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. Average graduation year, 2011. Wow. So that would have been the same year that football begun, began. Yeah, UTSA. yeah, it's a good point. 2011. Good point. So, you know, if that's spring 11, they had already graduated by the time first game had, start, uh, had been played. Right. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Okay. Wow. The, uh, the oldest alumni we had, sorry, whoever this is, graduated in 1986. The oldest. You do this for most schools, you're going to get way further back than that. That's and that's something I always, always bring up when I'm talking big picture UTSA. UTSA doesn't have those like retired alumni really at all. Very, right. very few of them. Yeah. Right, right. And that's going to take decades. The most common graduation years for survey respondents was um, 2011 had 10 people respond with that graduation year. 2019 was the highest with 11. So those are people that have only been out of school for two years. Yeah. Another thing that works in UTSA's favor one of the questions that we asked was, which of these locations best describes your living situation? Greater mm-hmm. San Antonio area, Texas, but outside of San Antonio or outside of Texas. Mm-hmm. This response made my jaw drop. Really? Yes. 66% of people that responded to the survey live in San Antonio. Only 7% live outside the state of Texas. That's wild to me. Think of I- like... I thought that the San Antonio slice was larger than I expected. 66 for this two thirds live in San Antonio. I figured they would probably be about half. So that was definitely larger than I expected, but I I definitely expected for an overwhelming majority to be Texas based for sure. Yeah. I, I definitely expected a big chunk of it as well, but I don't know for it to be what 93%. That's wild. Yeah. Yeah. That is crazy. And I, I guess, again, there's bias here because the alumni that move out of state probably don't stay as engaged with the university. They're probably not, you know, following a football blog podcast and, and responding to the survey. Um, but I guess the, my takeaway is like there are a lot of schools where their fan bases are really spread out. It's hard for them to get to games. Um, I, I know West Kentucky struggles with this. It's like there's not a whole lot of jobs in Bowling Green a lot of them moved to Nashville and stuff like that so you know it could be a drive right to even just come out to a couple games a year it's difficult Mm -hmm. UTSA doesn't have that problem like a lot of other schools do so that's really fascinating to me I think something that really benefits UTSA uh, especially for bowl attendance and bowl season is for any any game in Texas there should be a really good turnout I thought the next question was really really interesting uh, yeah. How did your spending and support of UTSA change last year? Right, and you think about a team that goes on a championship one, uh, run, wins eleven games straight, twelve and two overall, and less than half for well, about three quarters increased their spending mm-hmm. in UTSA, and then about yeah, one seven, quarter, seven a little bit less than one quarter said there was no change. And I'm interested to know: Did your spending change? I'm a way up. You think so? No doubt. Wow. So I went to a lot of games. Um, yeah. I gave a lot on a giving day, like relative to the past. Not that I was okay. dropping a million dollars out here or anything like that. Sure. Um, and then there was another thing that I, I donated to that I don't usually do. I can't remember what it was. Oh, I mean, I started contributing to Runners Rising, UTSA's NIL Collective, which everyone that listens to this podcast should be doing. Right. We'll, get, we'll, we'll get to that in a future question. Actually. Right on. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think like overall, like it wasn't like one. It's not like I made like a one really big 
donation to UTSA for one specific thing, but just like across the board, it was like here and there. Uh, getting my license plates for, for UTSA, sure. which for sure, I finally yeah. got. I finally got the notification; those are getting made, so mm-hmm. that's exciting. That's great. So I think it was just like a lot of like Long small awaited. to medium contributions, right? For sure, and I think this is pretty cool to look at as tangible evidence of look at how proportionately winning affects spending, right? And just yeah. interest and commitment, right? How invested quite literally you are into the program. Your investment yeah. into the program goes up whenever they're winning more. You're spending more time on it. You're spending more money on it, spending more of your attention on it. And so it's, is, it's, um, it's pretty cool. Three quarters of people spent more. Yeah. This has been one of those questions that we're going to go do in five years. And these numbers are not going to look anything like this year. I think in most <laughs> cases, the no change response is going to be the most common. The overwhelming, the, sli- yeah. the slightly, slightly increase, slightly decrease are probably going to be the majority most seasons. Sure. So, yeah, like you said, I think just really goes to show the impact of a winning football season on total contribution to the university. Yeah, definitely. So, you ready to get into the, the actual juicy questions? The actual, what, these aren't juicy to you? You don't, oh. you don't care about the demographics, dude? Oh, baby. I mean, it's fun. Uh, but we got some good stuff even uh, even better coming up. All right. Well, let's get into the juicy questions, Adrian, because I'm <laughs> so boring over here with my <laughs> demographic level setting. Demographic analysis. <laughs> oh, All right. So the this might be the juiciest one. What mm. word would you use to describe UTSA's time in Conference USA? Okay. What was your answer? I, I didn't actually fill out the survey because when I log in with my account, it goes like admin mode, right? Okay. Um, if, if you could answer it now, what is your answer? My answer would have one, been one. the one that was probably most common is okay. like development, right? It's like, right. This Growth. Was, yeah, this was a great fit for UTSA to kind of come into itself a little bit, you know, get its facilities in place, start competing, recruit better. But now, Maybe a little bit early, but now it's time for UTSA to make a jump to something that's going to present a new challenge. Right. Right. And that was most certainly the the highest answer that we got was that yeah. growth, growing, development, building. We saw a lot of people uh, getting better we, or, or better. We saw a lot of people put those sorts of answers, yeah. Uh, yeah. a majority. And yeah, that's definitely what CUSA did for for, for UTSA was for them to kind of go through their rough patch, figure themselves out. It was like, it was like preteen years. It was like puberty. Right. Mm-hmm. And then UTSA finally started to grow up a little bit, but they kind of had to go through uh, some weird, some awkward and some ugly stages in order to get there. And that's certainly what happened. Um, I, I guess I described it as more of like a, a quantitative version Um or more objective version, I put good. Overall, yeah, overall is good. Time in CSA was good. I wouldn't say it was great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would say it was. I would say it was far from bad, though. It was right. good. Right. It was good. Better than decent. Better than decent. It I was good. That. It was good. Overall, yeah, even, even looking outside of football, I mean, we had at least periods of success in almost yes. every sport. Yes. Right. Yes. So that, that's encouraging too. And I, I did try to think bit... of it outside of football. And I don't know if everyone did. Yeah, I don't think everyone survey, did. But yeah, but yeah. Uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And I think also, I think some people responded um, as like, how how is the Conference USA as a whole experience like for the conference and not from a UTSA perspective? I, at least I can think so because like we got some answers like wasted, uh, lackluster, uh, I mean, just all kinds of like really negative responses and frustrating. Fr- oh, well, frustrating. I can see like from a fan perspective, it was hard to watch the games. Okay. Like, there were a lot of schools that you didn't care about that were in the conference and stuff like that. Did you have a favorite answer that stood out to you? There was, there was some that man, I don't know about favorite. I should... Sure. Or we'll just say stand out good or bad or funny, whatever. Yeah. Okay. Um, so there was one that, <laughs> There's one that said um, incubation. There's yeah. one that said frustrating. Um, and then, and, and well, we just talked about the frustrating, but, but I like the frustrating one. There was one that said chaotic. And then I think my favorite one was tumultuous. Yeah. 
I think if we get to do all the favorite ones, I think maybe Tumultuous was my yeah. was my most favorite because because I don't think Tumultuous is totally wrong no, by so. by the definition of the word. I don't think Tumultuous is is exactly wrong. I mean, it right. was very up and down. I mean, it's swaying a lot, you know. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So um, I, I like Tumultuous. That's my favorite. Yeah, some of my favorites that you didn't mention. Uh, someone said Cocoon. I thought it was really great. Cocoon was good. I saw because, Cocoon. You know, that was like. The shell Outside that you can the see was in while I was developing, and now, ooh, it's a butterfly. It's spreading its wings, starting to fly. So yeah, that was great. Yeah. yeah, whoever whoever wrote that must have been an English major. Mm, um, and then cat- so. I thought cat- catapult was good too. Okay, yeah, that was a good one. But probably my favorite is the one that just said "ooh." <laughs> I don't agree with it, <laughs> but it was funny. Oh you. man, I would love to see how Southern Miss fans would respond to that question in a Southern Miss survey. Holy, oh, wow. that'd be good. That would be that'd be some insane content. Fast was a good answer too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, was it nine, ten years? No, seven. Less, less than that. Less than that. Nine. It's nine. We football came in twenty thirteen. It'll leave in twenty three. So it's nine, nine years. Yeah. Yeah. We'll leave in 23. Yeah, by the time we leave. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, next question. This, I mean, I wasn't surprised by these, but it was just funny to see, like, how much disparity there was in the answers. Which Conference USA programs will you miss playing regularly? Now, keep in mind, you can select all, none, one, two, whatever you want. Sure. UTEP ran away with it. Overwhelming. UTEP, UTEP ran away with it, 76%. Amazing. And I was talking to Adrian offline. When I was putting the questions together, I was – I had some questions that I scrapped because I felt like it was a leading question in the sense of like almost everyone's going to say yes or no to this because I kind of presented as that option. Mm-hmm. So the question I scrapped was, do you want to schedule a home and home series with UTEP? And I feel like everyone would answer yes to that. So what I did instead was which conference USA programs will you miss playing? UTEP passed with flying colors. 76% of people said they're going to miss playing UTEP. And then I have another question we're going to get into later is like, which schools do you want to do at a conference schedule with you can only pick three and right. utep was high on that one but they were nowhere near as high as what they probably would have been if i just said yes or no do you want to play utep so sure. that that was really interesting to me sure like yeah sure. It's safe to say people are going to miss our primos in el paso but i mean i think this one kind of holds more water whenever we say which uh, of these non-conference are most important to you when you say which programs will you miss playing and so there's like that whole yeah. emotional connection yeah. like people are going to miss playing utep I mean, that was a really really special matchup that occurred every single year with our primos down the interstate bro and and like there was always super memorable moments mm-hmm. that happened inside the game that happened outside <laughs> of the game that happened in our every single, <laughs> that happened every single sub circle and subset across social media sometimes and oh, and man. then in our own little groups that would happen right in certain clicks there's always a good story could you UTEP imagine trip. if if like utep had been this good every year when we were oh, in usa man. if both teams would have been as good this man, every, every know, single year that, that's a bummer to think about i mean um, incredible but 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 that said jared i mean there was a there was a time there where year in and year out, UTSA and UTEP was the wackiest, craziest, zaniest, most competitive game that would happen on the entire schedule yeah. for both teams, and yeah. and it was nuts what would go down in these games: five overtimes and four lightning delays, and you know, I mean, just crazy matchups year in and year yeah. out. It was always something memorable. So, yeah. miss them. So- I think um, Montag was a little bit lower than I thought they might be. They were at 49%. So I don't know if like people surprised. really hate LaTeX so much they don't want to play them anymore. I'm surprised. I did. I didn't I didn't select LaTeX. I don't okay. care to play them anymore. I don't want yeah. to play That's Rustin right. anymore. That's right. That's right. I don't want to go to Rustin um, anymore. What really surprised me, though, Southern Miss was kind of high. 22% said they're going to miss playing Southern Miss, which to me was shocking. That I, I would not have selected them. In fact, like I talk to my friends all the time, like I'm glad we're not a conference with Southern Miss anymore. <laughs> I think they're no, more no, fun. No shade on the Southern Miss fans out there that are cool. I don't I think they're not more fun, match. more fun to beat, more fun to talk mess to. Like, you yeah. know, the LA Tech opponent is so it's it's so raw and and hard it's like we, you really dislike them and hate them and don't yeah. want to play them don't want to be around them don't want to have the association with them there's a little bit of like a disgust a hate there but with southern miss it's a little bit more fun 
it's like we we dislike them, but you know, it's fun to beat them. It's fun to play them. When you beat LA Tech, I don't even know if it's fun to beat LA Tech. It's like, yeah, you beat LA Tech and it feels good, but you know, beating Southern Miss is fun. There's a fun to it. So I don't sure. know. I don't yeah. know if that dynamic makes sense the way I'm explaining it, but no, it's, I, it's I a, think so. I think so. It's it's a little bit more fun. So I don't know. I think I think I if I recall correctly, I did pick Southern Miss, I did pick UTEP, but I did not pick LA Tech. Okay. I don't think I picked anyone else. I think I only picked those two, actually. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, so Marshall and West Kentucky both got some love. They were both between 25 and 10 percent. Thought uh, Marshall would get more. I thought Marshall would get more. Yeah, yeah. I, I think like very few fans got to go out to West Virginia. I never got to. So I think that probably hurts. Um, the people don't have like the personal experience, you know, visiting their stadium and stuff. Um, I don't think Western Kentucky gets 25% had this last season not no happened with them. No way. Yeah. People are going to forget about Western Kentucky. In no one cares about playing Western Kentucky. Yeah. yeah. Now, there are a lot of schools that got no love. <laughs> Old Dominion mm. got one vote. Tennessee <laughs> got one vote. And FIU got zero votes. So, Yikes. FIU, you're officially Mr. Irrelevant uh, to UTSA fans. Florida Relevant University. Jeez. That's tough. That's crazy. I it's wonder, tough. like, if FAU wasn't going to the American, I wonder what percent FAU would have got. Like, probably five to fifteen, if I had to guess. Okay. Hardly, yeah. hardly. But they would have been, they would have been more than zero. I don't think you can just be like, oh, they're Florida. People would remember the Lane Kiffin days, and that was fun. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, another free response conference USA question. What was your greatest frustration with Conference USA? Oof, oof, oof. indeed. Oof. It was. Oh, dude, I'm scrolling through the full answers now. People wrote, like, full paragraphs. Someone wrote two full paragraphs. There was no profanity in any of the answers, so I appreciate it. Oh, really? That. You checked? Okay. Oh, no, never mind. There's <laughs> there's a big old FCUSA. <laughs> <I'm looking. laughs> but I think that's the only one that I've seen. I think that's the only one that I've seen. Um, yeah, some people got detailed on this, man. Yeah, yeah, they did. Oh, <laughs> man, I guess I'm laughing. <laughs> um, but, I mean, I guess overall, they pretty much all boil down to three main things. Lack of leadership. Yes. You know, lack, lack of trust, lack of, lack of faith in the commissioner, lack of vision. Um, and then there's the TV aspect of, you know, the, the payout was awful. It was hard to find games. The paywall sucks. The broadcasts on ESPN Plus and Conference USA TV were, were bad um just like lack of national exposure and then lastly like the lack of like rivalries and i don't know maybe that's just me yeah yeah i feel like that's, that's not just the utsa i feel like the whole conference suffered from that i think you're right absolutely and that was just always an issue with cusa is that it just didn't exist and there's several reasons for that you know mm-hmm. there was a lot of history with these teams playing each other for a long time and geographically wasn't really conducive to it but the you're, you're right about those big three. Like those are the big three main points. And then there's a million sub bullets underneath each of those three. Right. So leadership, yeah. uh, broadcast and uh, I guess rivalry slash opponents. Right. But all the stuff about lack of exposure, mm-hmm. uh, all the stuff about lack of broadcast quality, streaming services, TV presence, TV time, options to view, right? So I, I those those are a lot. And then a lot of people talking about how the conference was ran from up top, right? Mm-hmm. Leadership. You see leadership actually mentioned specifically yep. a lot of wow. times. But I think I think for whenever I whenever I look through, for the most part, what I see as the overwhelming majority is TV uh broadcast based. Okay, well, on a happier front, we'll talk about the move into the AC in the next section. Oh, yeah. Um, so baby. this first question was another one of my favorites. Um, assuming that the AAC adopts what our, we're, we call pod scheduling, so you drop divisions and then you just have like uh, four teams that are guaranteed to all play each other on, the, on their schedules each year, and then you rotate everything else. But assuming a schedule like that, what three teams would you want to guarantee that UTSA plays every year? I mean, I think the results were as expected. Um, yeah. The top three vote getters were SMU, UNT, and Rice. And I think Rice is probably because we have a lot of subscribers in Houston that, like the two of us, it's really yeah. Yeah. You know, I could I could take the rail to Rice. It's great. You know, I don't even have to Uber. Um, so I, I think that shows that people still value that regionality, even if they say that they don't, they want the best teams. 
from a personal fan perspective. Whenever they're that. actually answering the question, they want to be able to go to the games and see the games in person, right? Yeah. Like, so there's, no, that- there's no doubt that from a football perspective, having UAB or Memphis in your pod is better than Rice, but Rice won out in our poll. Well, when you Fairly. look, it would do, but yeah, I mean, when you look at this pod, if it's SMU, UNT, Rice, and UTSA, I mean, is that a sexy like pod matchups and competitive? Why? I mean, not really, no, not super much. But yeah, the fans value that ability to go see the team locally mm-hmm. so much more, and and I think you make a great point with that. Yeah, yeah. So uh, the East Coast schools were really, really low. As you might guess, ECU, USF, Temple, uh, FAU, Charlotte, all super, super low, like less than five votes. Um, but Navy is further away than all those schools, and they got 26 votes. Yeah, I thought that was interesting. I don't want to play a triple option team every year. That's literally – I was like, I don't want to play Navy every year. Why would you yeah. want to play Navy every year? Yeah, that, that's asking for trouble. I, I guess it's Terrible like idea. an old military thing. Yeah, but – but careful, careful what you ask for. <laughs> for logistics, man. Yeah, not a yeah. good idea. Yeah, it's it's a long trip to Maryland for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, next question. No surprise here. Which AAC program are you most excited to share a conference with? SMU took it heavily, so cool. heavily, yeah. 63.5%. Amazing. Uh, behind them was Memphis at 20%. Um, and then Navy, 9%. Yep. 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 Memphis, Memphis getting a pretty good share with that 20%. I think that's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, agreed. Would you take what, – what, what would your answer to be to that one? SMU. SMU? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the history, right? Okay, next question. Uh, what benefit of joining the AAC excites you the most? Select up to three. Hmm. Leading vote-getter. No surprise, based on the Conference USA results. Easier TV and stream <laughs> access, <laughs> which won't be a problem in the AAC with everything beyond ESPN+. Plus. Yep. Membership, prestige, slash brand recognition was the second place at 75%. Um, and then in third place, increased conference distribution revenue. Mm. So that, that'll be a pretty big jump from Conference USA with all those extra payouts from bowls and TV and NCAA basketball bids and all that good stuff. Um, and then fourth place would have been conference leadership. People weren't too jazzed by the additional regional matchups, easier travel, or improved Olympic sports. I was surprised. I was surprised because, you know, it's funny because whenever you ask the pod question, you know, it seems to have a different sort of answer than regional matchups only getting 17% yeah. of the vote That's here. That's a good point. Right? That's a good point. And yeah. so depending on how you frame it to the yeah. fan, no, we care about the yeah. recognition of the big yeah. brand yeah, yeah. and, the, and right. the money. But then whenever we ask you, well, do you want to go to the game? They're like, oh, yeah. That's the most that, important thing. Go that's what's gonna be so fascinating <laughs> about watching the Sun Belt versus the AAC is like the Sun Belt is like fully recognizing that there's this subliminal desire to have these regional matchups. It's good for fans, better for attendance, whatever. But everybody wants to win, and you're not gonna win at a high level without the big TV money and the big time TV slots and all that good stuff, big stadiums, all that. So yeah, yep. I'm fascinated to watch that play out over the years. Yeah, I like that. Um, okay, second question for you. Membership prestige slash brand recognition. This has been a big talking point that we haven't really talked about a lot. Yeah, on the podcast. you know, I don't think we have. I don't think we've touched it that much. You know, the new AAC. A lot of people will say that's the poor man's AAC. Water down. C U S A A C. Is it really the AAC, right? And so when we look at membership prestige brand recognition, does that really carry the same weight that? It does now a couple of years ago until these conferences split up. Is that going to be the case when in the new rendition with all these CSA schools moving over? Is it, is it really membership prestige in the same sense? I think so. I mean, I think for most UTC fans, when they respond with that, they're thinking of SMU, right? Like SMU is pretty well known. They were in the Southwest conference and all that stuff. But for me, I think of it like, okay, how many people, around america no fiu middle tennessee west kentucky charlotte but then compare that to like tulane uh i think even tulsa's is like decently well known people know um, those names in southwest yeah they recognize um, those names yes right yeah point. i mean even east carolina like i think 
sports fans know them a little bit yes. more because they've had more success historically and stuff of course like that. they know navy of course they know memphis and yeah that's not yeah of course and that's not even getting into the big ones like everybody knows right i'm just talking like at the at the lowest level you're still gonna have a lot more national brand recognition for a south florida than you have for an fau so i think no matter which way you look at it it's a pretty big upgrade even if yeah sure it's not it, you know, it's the old conference USA, but the old conference U- the USA was a good conference. That's why people are so mad about current conference USA is it's such a huge right. step down a huge from what, step it, down. what it was in the early 2000s. Right? right. So I think it's a positive for sure. Right. Uh, general UTSA questions. Yeah. Uh, this was Last the section. big, this was the big juicy question that the answer is easy, but it's really not. And I think a lot of people probably s- sat on this question for like 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 for the average amount of time spent per question dude this was enormously larger than any other question that was on this survey oh, dude i should have i should have thrown some google analytics on this form just dude if we could like have had a timer it took people to answer oh yeah. my god i'm willing to bet like if the average time was like 10 to 15 seconds on the other questions this one was dude i'm gonna go minute plus two dude i mean i sat there and was like oh uh, yeah dude, the, you know you have these people that like wrote these long statements in for other two like someone said it was texas state then it was losing a tech if you're gonna force a new one make it smu like dude it's, it's this is a simple question like just say texas state <laughs> easy easy question so who is utsa's primary rival and really the only two answers were North Texas and Texas State. Now, you had UAB and U of H on there, and then you had the write-in option, but really, your only two options, UTSA fan, are Texas State and UNT. Those are our only two options for who is the main rival, right? Dude, UNT by an overwhelming majority, 56.6% say North Texas Mean Green is UTSA's primary rival with only a third, 34% voting for Texas State, Jared. Yeah, when you think of it this way, it's crazy. UNT almost doubled Texas State in the responses. That was unexpected. I thought this would be a lot. I thought it would be like a 40-40 kind of split. So that was surprising to me. Wow. Yeah, man. I thought it was going to be a heck of a lot closer. Yeah. I thought it was going to be extremely close. Yeah. So I was pretty impressed when I opened this up and saw this and realized, all right, UTSA fan is a little more, you know, level I wonder, Like I said earlier with Southern Miss, I wonder if you ask UNT fans, if, it, if it's SMU or UTSA, what that breakdown looks like. Oh, baby, that's a good question. All right. I forgot who has the Go Me Green Burner account, but whoever that is, Please post that poll in there. Post our oh, results. Post our results and then ask. I think I knew UNT think. was going to win because I, I screenshot this question and I put it on Twitter and I got ton of responses and quote tweets all saying, it's UNT, it's UNT. Yeah. It's not Texas State to him be this. And it was all to do. But the question isn't talking about football. It's ETSA's primary rival. And sure. dude, there's literal decades of competition between UTSA and Texas state down that 35 corridor, baby of 60 miles of, you know, and, and that's, that's existed long before football and then into football. And so you can't take that away, but look at the average demographic, Jared, and it goes Mm -hmm. back to the demographics we were talking about earlier. A lot of those students weren't here for those intense uh, basketball games in the combo between UTSA and Texas State back in the day, right? And yep. so they don't they don't know about all that celebrated history that's happened. So I, I wasn't too surprised. I, I or I knew UNT was going to win, but I thought it'd be by a slimmer margin for sure. Yeah, it I is mean, the right is, answer though. It's the right answer. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. Yeah, yeah. It's hard to disagree with that. So this is something. I, oh God, uh, we're we're like already going south on time here. So I probably should have my soapbox. Okay. But it has always annoyed me how UTSA fans make rivalries aspirational and not focused in reality and like i knew i was going to get a lot of that in the other field but there was it was a lot a lot of people saying like houston's our rival smu's our rival ut's our rival i mean come on dude get out of here like get out of here get out of here everyone laughs at texas tech fans when they're like oh our rivalry with ut like ut doesn't give a crap about you you know like we got one ride in for utep and i was like 
Yes. I fucks with that. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I will I'll allow that one. I'll I will allow it. We will. That's not aspirational, it. though. That's, <laughs> not, that's not aspirational. No, it makes that's, sense. It makes sense. I'll totally yeah. accept that one. I'll say that yeah. that could even have been a multiple choice answer for sure. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, that's the one that that's really the only one that people got a little bit ridiculous on the ride and answers. We might take the ride it away from the next time we ask. Uh, yeah. I, I about the I'm rival. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. We have to. Yeah. Okay. So All right, moving on. Excitement level for this season's out of conference schedule. <laughs> it's funny. It's Dude, funny. We, because... we should ask the, we should ask a question again. Not only next year, we should ask it in week five of the season. <laughs> <laughs> thinking back how excited should you have been uh it, dude it's it's funny you know i mean you think you said earlier be careful what you wish for you know and you always want to get on the bigger stage and play the bigger names play the bigger teams well you know what happens it gets a hell of a lot harder it gets a hell of a lot tougher mm -hmm. and i mean how excited are you to go into the Thunderdome, bro. I mean, the the chamber, and 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 that's what you're looking at here through those first three games. I think I answered a three on this. Like, I'm oh, excited uh, about the matchup. I think I'm, I'm excited about the like. I'm super excited about the matchups, but I'm also scared. I'm kind of scared shitless yeah, too. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I was like, <laughs> if if you answered a three, you were part of the four percent that were three <laughs> or lower. <laughs> the six of the 159 <laughs> responses That's yeah wild. it was a three or four maybe it was a four because i was excited about the the matchups but dude i mean no i mean but can you be super optimistic about the win-loss record no it's a little scary it's scary it's scary it's scary jared i'm frightened to be honest with you we'll talk about it more as the season previews sure. get closer but sure yeah yeah agreed okay um so next question is another one that was pretty interesting which of these FBS non-conference series are most important to you? Pick up a three. So I did leave an other option on here just to see, you know, if anyone had any. I mostly try to pick teams that UTC has played at a conference in the past or will become an out-of-conference game in the future. Uh, man, people love that Houston series. It's at 83%. 83%. Wow. So wow. We had a 157 responses to this question. You can only pick three options. For Houston to get that high – that's pretty, it's pretty serious. I was impressed. Well, I think everyone's sort of recognizing that Houston really is the model and the example that UTSA needs to strive to be, right? Yeah. And it's super important that we stay relevant in sort of U of H's competitive field so that we're associated with that upper echelon of, right, the the G5, P6, whatever, getting to that next level. And so I think everyone sort of recognizes how, how crucial that is, that we mm -hmm. that we sort of keep a close association association with, with right. U of H, right? Right, right, right. right. Um, and then Texas State. Texas State's got to be the number one answer, baby. I mean, that's the most important. We got to keep playing Texas State, and yeah. that's always got to happen Well, forever. Texas State was actually the third highest result. Just yeah. They were slightly right. beat out by Texas, who – We've never played before. Makes zero sense whatsoever. This is like the this is the thing that makes me say, "What the hell, UTSA fan? What the hell, Alamo Dome Auto Listener? What are you talking about?" Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, people, why uh, is that important to you? Give me one reason why that's important to you. It's an inferiority complex. Uh, if, oh we're gonna, if we're going to keep God. it real, yes, I, don't know. I agree with you. I think people are so sick of getting asked oh why did why didn't you go to ut or oh is that a satellite campus or whatever like the, it gets in their head and they really want to beat ut in football really bad a lot of people ask that i don't feel like a lot of people ask maybe if you were like out of state yeah people would ask that but in yeah. and old, in old Texas, people too i don't think sure yeah but our demographic is super young this is like right. a lot of people are just tired of grandma uh, yeah grandma, I, I don't know getting, or or you the one that, maybe they hate cap students i don't know that's fair I, I, I can't judge you for that. Um, yeah, that. Texas A&M was pretty high, too, 30%. But I, I think 30% is about what I expected for A&M. Obviously, a lot of people have family ties and their friends went there and all that stuff, so that's good. Um, like I mentioned earlier, UTEP was not as high in this poll. There are more people that want to play A&M and UT at a conference than want to play UTEP. I'm dumb. I don't like that. I disagree. I agree. So and like like don't get me wrong, I want to have like one big P5 game on the schedule every year. I don't care which one it is though. 
Right. Exactly. Like, I wonder, like, if I had a generic, you know, like in, in presidential polls or like, would you vote for a generic Republican or Democrat? Maybe I should have like generic Texas P5 and like see like what percentage that gets. Cause, like, I don't care if it's Baylor. It, it, it's tech. Texas P5. Yeah. yeah and it, I won't play one. It could be, it, 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 tech. Yeah. it could be Texas Tech. It, could be it doesn't matter. Um, yeah. I really like the next question almost maybe even more. Yeah. Which is, which of it's the something FC- we're talk about. FCS opponents are most intriguing to you and overwhelming majority of course as it should be is UIW the crosstown rivals sure 67 percent which is still low I think it's still low that's decent I don't don't know if you know I mean this so this question not everyone answered right so Uh, this was our this wasn't the lowest we got 152 out of 160 so there was a drop off but a lot of people wrote in uh, sure. not FCS teams or they said I don't want to play FCS teams <laughs> so I guess that drops it down to like 145 or something like that so you have right. to drop off on this one right right there's just not that that care about it or just the general you know knowledge of any of these schools either yeah I think it would be super awesome to play SFA regularly I think it would be right. aw- I think it would be really cool to play UIW um, and so those are the two that you saw get the most and then UTRGV Came in third with 50 so, votes. Dude, when I first opened up the poll, UTRGV was blowing past all other FCS schools. Yeah. I was like, what the hell, dude? I got to email this to Lisa Compost, man. This is crazy. Uh, but it did level out. They ended up getting third place. But like when I first submitted it, they had like a huge head start over all of their schools. So that was pretty wild. People are like really looking forward to play, playing the Vacaros for the first time. Right. UIW would be cool to play every other year or whatever. Um, yeah. SFA is fun because of the Jeff Trailer link, right? And, and that's what makes that fun, really. I, you could argue any other team. I, 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 I would love to play SFA even outside of the Jeff Trailer era. I think they yeah. have a good fan base. Like, they're a very respectable program and all of that. So I, I would love that, for sure. Yeah, I think it'd be cool to play them in, bas- and to play them in basketball more often. Yeah. It'd be cool. Yeah. And uh, UTRGV, yeah, that would be a heck of a lot of fun, man. A heck of a lot of fun. So it's cool. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, last free response question. This is another one. I think the answers are pretty predictable. But what is the biggest issue facing UTSA athletics right now? You saw a lot of people here answer facilities. Yep. You saw a lot of people here answer money. Um, I wrote in, and I guess it was kind of a combination of both of those, but that was keeping up with the pace of growth. The biggest issue is keeping up with the pace of the growth, right? And yeah. whether that's money, facilities, going to new conference, it's, it's all that stuff. You, you, can't, you can't do everything all at once. You right? can't do everything all at yeah. once. And, and, and everything is happening all at once, right? Yeah. And so they've just got to do their best to try to keep up with it as best as they can. Yeah. <laughs> right? Dude, and, okay. And so I, I, just, I counted and out of 142 responses, 59 of them had the word facilities in it. That's rough, dude. Uh, outside of that, like money, funding, donor, all that stuff was was definitely number two, and I think those are two intrinsically aligned responses because one leads to the other, right? Um, a lot of people talking about basketball program. Yeah, no secret there. <laughs> I thought that was interesting, um, though. I thought people would be a little more zoomed out in their answers, <laughs> yeah. but there was a lot of it. There's a lot of people that put basketball, and I was like, "What?" Yeah, <laughs> where were did you pick out any responses out of all of these that surprised you, or that you disagreed with? I mean, there's like some dumb ones, but I don't, I don't think if they're. I mean, I think, I think most of them are. Well, I don't disagree with this one, but someone said no respect from the Alamo Dome in terms of staffing or food selection. <laughs> like that, that is true, but I, I, I can't say that that's the biggest issue facing UTSA athletics right someone now. Someone put proximity to UT, talking about UT Austin. Interesting. I was like, I don't even understand that. And I was like, so yeah, I mean, there's like some some weird, kind of more off ones like that, yeah. but. I don't think there's um, any like legit ones that I like disagree with. I think they all the, got some some backing. The only one that I really had a problem with it was a uh, fair weather fan base. I, I don't really think that's much of a problem. There were two. Today. There were two that kind of talked about 
the fan base. It was fair weather fan base and then like consistency from fans, like consistent support from fans or something like yeah. that. I see. Yeah. Like, there's one like new fan generation. So I guess a, a pretty good number of people feel this way. I, I haven't really seen that as a problem for UTSA. I think like when the team is decent, the attendance is good. Yeah. And I also think that we um, were both you and I both were impressed with UTSA fans sort of behavior and expectations throughout this last year of success. I think that yeah. we've done great as growing and maturing as a fan base as the seasons have gone on. Mm-hmm. So I think we've done a good job in that department. Yeah. Well, speaking of facilities, next question, which future Ooh. athletics facility should be UTSA's next focus? Now, now keep in mind, I did not put the park West facility on here because they're breaking ground on it today, probably for most of the listeners. It's on Thursday, July 28th. Um, so hoping to get some good info out of that. Uh, very exciting. So that, that'll be like a, a field house, locker room, training room for track and soccer. Sorely, sorely needed. Um, yeah. Awful situation they were in before. So I think the options that I put were like basketball arena, basketball practice facility, baseball stadium, co- oh, yes. covered football practice field for the right. four that I put down. And then there was an other option that got a ton of entries. But it really came down to just two when it came to the responses. Yeah. And that was baseball stadium and basketball arena with baseball stadium beating out basketball arena by eight votes. I think it's more than that because most of the write-ins that we got were stuff like add grandstand seating to the baseball stadium, renovate like improvements, the stadium, improvements not, yeah, to the yeah. current one. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. and people even got like pretty granular with Mm -hmm. it which is kind of interesting um so yeah i I think like baseball probably would have ended up with 50 percent of the vote do you think this is because of the the bias towards the success of the program like baseball has won more uh we care about them more because they're winning more we like them more because they're winning more and also to a degree they they deserve it more because they've won more right i guess fan could make that argument too Mm -hmm. but is that why we're seeing baseball have the overwhelming or what if 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 basketball and baseball are both winning you know that they have the same winning percentage and are both extremely competitive in in conference and basketball goes on a on a cinderella run in the csa tournament similar to how baseball did right do we see the same sort of disbursement on this question or is basketball the majority? I think basketball might be the majority. If basketball is playing as good as baseball is. I think so. I think this is winning bias. I'm going to be honest. Yeah, I think so too. But I was a little bit surprised at how few votes a practice facility for basketball got because that, that would be my, my vote actually. I'm not surprised by that at all. I think the fans, could care less about a practice facility because they don't get any direct benefit from it. Fans want to go to sure. a new arena and see the game. And so yeah. practice facility just doesn't get people excited. It's not sexy. It's not fun. They would they would get benefit from it as fans. It just wouldn't be immediate because... Correct. I don't think people realize that UTSA doesn't have a practice facility for basketball and volleyball. Right, right. I don't think people know that. I People probably think that it's normal to practice in your arena. That's not the case. It's not. It, any any real mid-major, high-major blue blood basketball program has like a dedicated practice facility, right? And like you go there and you have training rooms and you have a weight room and you've got nutrition and all that stuff. That's bare minimum basic facility that UTSA doesn't have. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the complaints about the convo <laughs> Uh, kind of stem from that lack of a practice area and that they have to use the convo in weird ways because they don't have another facility to like use some of those rooms for, right? Like you, you can't even renovate the convo because sometimes they're using those rooms as training spaces and stuff. Yeah. So, and from a recruiting standpoint, I mean, we were just talking about SFA. SFA just opened a $40 million training facility and there's no way that you could ever convince a recruit to go to UTSA over SFA and basketball with those facilities. Wow. Even even with UTSA wow. going into the American Athletic Conference, SFA's facilities, both arena and practice facility, blow UTSA out of the water. It's not even it's crazy. close. It's not and even it's close. cheap. It's cheap. You can build a really, really nice basketball facility for probably 20, 30 million, right? It's very mm-hmm. doable. And the arena is way more than that. Yeah. Right? Dude, 
a basketball arena is so far away right now from a fundraising perspective, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't know. Well, we'll see. We'll see how UTSA Athletics decides to prioritize which arenas need to be built first. Well, I, I think if you look at the, the planning documents, they do have basketball practice facility, practice facility basketball phase. volleyball is, yeah. is the next phase right yeah so i think like right now like they they're breaking ground on the i think they actually actually technically broke ground already on park west but they're going to cover the race practice field and mm-hmm. then the next phase after that is basketball practice arena or sorry basketball practice facility before baseball and then is anything and that and then baseball slash softball is supposed to come next right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so this next question, we were very, very satisfied with the answers from everybody. So very, very good job. Um, and we were just talking about how we've matured as a fan base. And I think this is a great illustration of that. How many wins would constitute a successful football season, in your opinion? And uh, about 61 percent, 62 mm-hmm. percent almost mm-hmm. voted for seven or more wins would be successful i think that's the right answer i'm surprised to see the fans vote that way right so 47 percent were down with eight and four and 15 percent were down with seven and five so i mean that's really really good i thought we were going to see a, a huge chunk voting for nine and ten wins and I think it's good that we've got our expectations in check just because that out of conference schedule is just too beefy to really allow yeah. that to be a realistic expectation. Yeah. And if you look at Twitter, you're going to see a lot of 12, 13. So it's good to see those are Ten. outliers like we expected. Yeah. So good job, everybody. Yeah. All right. Well, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up. So the last section is just performance review section. Everything right now is pretty much as expected. Um, first up, President Amy, super high. Uh, what, like, almost 90 percent of people approve or highly approve of the job he's done so far um, yep. he did have some haters he had seven people put, give him one which is the worst that rating was shocking yeah i think those are the come and take it truthers i guess <laughs> oh baby <laughs> <laughs> uh athletic director dr lisa campos uh phenomenal 78 percent gave her the highest rating huge yeah and i, I I was one of those that gave Lisa a better rating than I did Amy, but I gave Amy a good one too, of course. Sure. But sure. yeah, Lisa's five out of five, son. I mean, yeah, there's no arguing that. Yeah. Not, not as many haters for Dr. Campos. She only had uh, two votes for one. I, I think there was one troll submission. So maybe just one hater. Um, and then, and then of oh course, yeah, of course, Jeff trailer. Oh yeah. 95%, 95% five star approval. Are you kidding me? That's why I just paid the big bucks, man. If this dude was a restaurant and those were his Google reviews, his Yelp reviews, I mean, come on, it'd be the hottest place in town. That dude, is tremendous feedback. I don't think there's anything in the world these days that has a 95% satisfaction rating. Nothing. Nothing. Oh, 95%. well, actually, four and five is satisfactory, right? So that puts him at 99% satisfaction. Right. It's crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Okay, um, and then last one, a little bit more interesting. Steve Henson, sixty-three percent disapprove, but only a seven point five percent approval rating. So about thirty percent of people had no real opinion on Steve Henson. Right. Right. They were neutral. neutral. Couldn't care. Yeah. And I, I don't know if that's more of people not caring about basketball in general and just like having no expectation for the program. I mean, or they just I think decide. I don't know. I think they don't care because they're not relevant. If the team's relevant, yeah. then you have more people that care. Sure. So, you know, they're winning games. You're paying more attention now. All of a sudden, you're invested in UTSA basketball, but because they're so lackluster, you naturally don't pay attention to it, and so you don't really have an opinion on it, and that's fine. But those that have have watched kind of through the years, they still have an opinion on it. And I think that's where you're seeing that 62, 63% disapproval rating, which is just pretty large, man. Gotta say, I'm super impressed with the feedback and the response to the survey. And I can't think of every single person that took five, 
well, maybe 10 minutes with that rivalry question minutes out of their, out of their day to, to go through this and figure it out and, and help us collect this fantastic, fantastic feedback. We might be turning it into the athletics office. even. <laughs> we might have to. I showed a friend, he was like, you guys should pay you for this. Like, That's not a bad idea. But if they just subscribe to our Patreon for as little as $5 a month. <laughs> uh, but no, for real. Thank you guys so much uh, for participating in this. I'm glad everyone had a great time with it. We'll definitely keep it going in the future. And uh, we'll be back probably next week to talk about the start of fall camp, dude. Wow. It's here. Let's go. Let's do this. Let's ride, baby. Back to back. Mm-hmm. Back to back. Quest for number two begins. Let's go. Mm-hmm.